I'm Johnny, and it's time for Vaporwave. What is Vaporwave, you may ask? Well, first of all, we have to start with a little bit of history. Parody is dead. Satire is what killed it. And Poe's Law is now an amendment to the Constitution. Vaporwave is what happens when millennials get a hold of 80s and 90s culture, chew it up, digest it, and puke its smooth jazzness back at us. And it is wonderful. Maybe I owe some of the love of Vaporwave to my sister because I remember growing up with her when we were driving around town, but she would point at the 80s architecture, you know, bright, brilliant colors and balls everywhere and say Art Nouveau. And we would all laugh at how completely insane and ugly this was. And so when faced with Vaporwave now, it was easy to point and laugh at first, but then it was also shockingly easy to get really into it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So Vaporwave started around 2010, is anyone's guess. So it's not like it hasn't been around for a while. And its home seemed to be that of Tumblr and the Chans and Reddit. And there's certainly a large portion of Vaporwave on YouTube. Now, as a musical form, its birth is really similar to something like techno or drum and bass in that the standard of the form is in the studio. You use the studio in order to make the music. Again, very much like techno and drum and bass. And like techno and drum and bass, it lends itself really well to the in the box, which is to say the computer studio. And like especially drum and bass, it depends on sampling as the basis of its form. But instead of funky breakbeats, what we're talking about here is bad 80s music, music on hold, background music, and smooth jazz. And generally, slowed down and sometimes even chopped and screwed. Now wait, Johnny. You might be asking yourself, what the hell is Chopped and Screwed? Chopped and Screwed is this hip-hop movement that came out of Houston, I think. And the whole thing there was that, that a hip-hop DJ named DJ Screw would slow down records and take two copies of the same record and cut back and forth. But he'd have the second record offset by a beat. So anyways, the whole idea is a slow, somewhat stuttered roll. Now, Vaporwave is honest to God the whitest music around. I mean, come on, we're taking mall Muzak and chopping and screwing that. And let me tell you, navigating the world of being put on hold and corporate presentations and even wandering through malls, it is kind of nice to be able to sit back and go, huh, that would make a really cool vaporwave track. So there's something I haven't really talked about at all, and that's the visual aesthetic of Vaporwave, which is at least as much a part of the audio style. Again, we're talking about 80s culture and 90s culture that's been remixed and made somehow more so. Now, I don't want to get too deep into the visual aesthetic because it's not something I follow as much as the audio. I mean, shit, look. But you can't have one without the other, and these two things definitely inform each other. Now, one of the neat things about Vaporwave is the fact that it does not have a particular place in geography. You can't, like, point at Minneapolis, home of the Mall of America, and say, that's where Vaporwave comes from. Because that's not where it comes from. It comes from the Chans. It comes from Tumblr. It comes from Reddit. It seems to me like there's not even a clothing style of Vaporwave. Like, there's no backwards fat pants analog to what Vaporwave kids wear. It's more about what band camp you have. So, if this sounds like it's something that's your jam, then there are more people who have done a better job of explaining Vaporwave than I have. This is just a little something to wet your whistle. In particular, there's like a 20-odd minute documentary called Vaporwave, A Brief History. It's super good. It's How to Make Vaporwave by Frank JC. It really gets across the fundamental tongue firmly planted in cheek nature of Vaporwave, but also its earnestness, which the line that is frequently played with that I really enjoy. And I mean, this genre is a super genre. Vaporwave is a class of genres. You got things like echo jams, utopian virtual, faux virtual. That's not a thing. Faux utopian, hypnagogic drift, broken transmission, mall soft, late night lo-fi, 
Down the doobly-doo, I've posted a link to a infographic that gives you names of the subgenres, an idea of its visual aesthetic, as well as some of the key players for that style. Anyways, I find this style super fascinating, super interesting, and actually kind of fun to listen to, both in a giggly kind of, oh my god, I can't believe that guy just did that, and also in a, huh, this is my jam. Why is this my jam? This is weird. This is so my jam right now. Yeah, this is my jam. The real crazy thing about Vaporwave is that it might already be dead. Long live Vaporwave. Like, MTV has already taken on its style, at least as far as visual aesthetic goes, and sort of tried to take it on in some sort of crazed plea for relevance. But is it even possible for something like MTV to try and chew it up and co-opt Vaporwave? Like, sure, it can try to get the visual aesthetic down. But this is mall music. Slow down. Like, in their quest to maintain relevance, like, are they not already being pointed at and laughed at? And even to that end. Like, isn't it kind of funny that I'm talking about it? All right. I hope I kind of opened your eyes to this new genre. I'm not going to promise you'll love it, but it certainly is fascinating. Post some links to your favorite down in the doobly-doo below. And until next time, genre explorations are fun. <laughs>